I wanted to start this permaculture update video with just from my neighbor's yard I got maybe five five gallon buckets worth of apples and have been dehydrating them so yeah and I just wanted to kind of show you yeah uh, apples from my mother's tree apples from the neighbor's tree and then plenty of them yeah so just out here in the front yard you can kind of see the my solar dehydrator setup. Uh, it's facing south, glass plane, uh, painted galvanized tin inside. Then there's holes down at the bottom drilled in. Let's see if I can show you those real quick. And then they go up into holes inside there. And yeah, the apples inside have been dehydrating for about one day. And so yeah, you can see that they're working. The ones near the bottom are pretty close to done already. And you can just see all the rest of the trays going up and then up at the top they still got pretty much moisture and then yeah, just a single chimney which I'm sure I could improve greatly but you know just with New Mexico's dry heat and high or low humidity you know higher heat you know the apples don't seem to need any major modifications. They tend to dry out after about a day so yeah with this setup it tends to run about a hundred degrees C you know and then I can feel like if I put my hand you know above the the chimney I can actually feel just the hot humid moisture just coming out of it so yeah it's working pretty well even though it's not optimized okay yeah so uh, the fall season I harvested a tiny bit of corn and that's just mainly to keep you know some corn going, you know, some seed line. I uh, was getting a little bit of pumpkin and squash, but yeah, they're just really struggling slowly. Uh, just need more organic material, better soil. So yeah, I this is year number two, and so I actually retilled, you know, the ground, and I just wanted to get in the organic material faster, so I took in compost, you know, from my compost pile over there, and I just started really mixing it in, but I eventually hoped to not till anymore but I just wanted to kind of show the the you know state of the garden at the moment what it looks like the soil again you can kind of see the you know the heavy clay uh, with mixed with granite granitoid and stuff and you can kind of see I've been adding previously uh, uh, biochar into it and it was charged typically with urine and stuff but then I wanted to come over here and just show you know, the deeper down, you can kind of see the stratification. You can see the organic material on the top here, you know, on the top layers, and then down below that hasn't really penetrated. So, just trying to get the organic material into the ground as fast as possible. So, that's why I'm tilling it. And so, eventually, once I've got a lot of organic material into the ground, I hope not to till ever again. I'm actually reading Ruth Stout's No Till Garden book at the moment, you know, and after many many years of just comp or like sheet mulching she's never had to till so yeah anyway adding some of the hay back onto the top and you're gonna continue it for the next year but it does do a really good job of keeping the moisture in the, the ground so yeah oh just show off my grape plants while I'm over here yeah they seem to have gotten some kind of virus or bacterial infection, something's got it, but yeah, I'm hoping that they struggle through. Occasionally give them a little bit of compost tea, you know, to give them some extra nutrients, because I don't want to till the soil over here, so yeah, I just compost tea the area to try and put the nutrients back in, so I don't have to lift up the rocks, and I think there's even weed block underneath that. Yeah, over there having a little wood pile, along with some mulberry trees started, some other seeds that didn't take off bean bush, uh, tomato plant I was messing with, uh, apricots, New Mexico elderberries, and I'm starting to stratify more apricot seeds now in these bushes, and then, yeah, wood pile, wood pile, then I started working on a bicycle powered saw, you know, to see how difficult it would be to build one of them, and then, you know, what advantages would it be, how labor intensive, how expensive, so yeah, I hope to keep working on that. Yeah. Let's see here. Compost tea running behind there. 
Yeah, just put in a little sponge pit over there. Just loaded it up with material and it's basically just a big compost pile about three feet down into the ground and then made a little irrigation channel so if we ever get enough runoff because you know my rain barrels if they overflow they come along here they follow the slope follow along here they should go down here and then continue just trying to maximize the water retention into the land but since I've added so much more organic material the water tends to soak in you know way before it even gets to this area Okay, I should probably explain this area right here is where I do my grain gray water from like my showers when they're warming up in the morning and or if I have sink water you know and you can just see that it's you know where I pour it it's still very green uh, apricot tree went in uh, grape over there in the back yeah hopefully I put hollyhocks in over the place getting tons of green and just organic material from neighbors and waste projects. Oh, quickly, yes. Uh, getting some squash coming in and I put little boards underneath them to try and get them off the ground. Yeah, uh, acorn squash and I believe that's uh, spaghetti squash, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, someone will probably let me know if I am mistaken. Uh, another spaghetti squash, putting in a rosemary bush over here. Yeah, just a nice log to keep everything rotten. There's the pre-compost pile before I tend to throw it all into the compost pile. So this side's finishing up and this side's starting. Yeah, and then uh, again, just a lot of dirt. You know that if I do another yard project or something, you know, some people just throw away their dirt. So I'm slowly getting rid of it. Yeah, originally it had my Hugo culture experiment, but I didn't like Hugo culture above ground. I really prefer Hugo culture you know, below ground, which I then term as a sponge. I call it a sponge, then it's no longer hugel culture, because hugel, you have a, a mound, you know. If it's below ground, then it's something else. It needs to be termed something else. Yeah, my rainwater system is still doing pretty good. Uh, I do get an occasional leak. You can kind of see the leaking from here to here, so probably next season I'll have to just re reapply a little cock around it to prevent the leakage but yeah anyway uh, this one's empty empty and this one's still mostly full so about our monsoon was maybe a good month ago and haven't gotten a whole lot of rain but I still have water in most of them and so yeah if I really wanted to I could go crazy with the water right now because it's getting towards the end of the season yeah rosemary uh, this one's kind of coming along uh, my goji berries are actually tend to be exploding. I mean, this was how big they were typically when I had grown them inside, but then they grew all this matter up on top. And then they fell over, and then so they want to start shooting up another one. So anyway, in this, this one growing season, they've grown these entire large stocks, and then they're starting a new whole new one to go up straight again. So pretty intense little guy. Let's see how he does. Uh, keeping some mullein around. My neighbor actually thought this was really cute. She's like, oh, it's so fluffy, just like a bunny's ear. So, yeah, just trying to bring in different plants so that everybody can see. Oh, that's really neat. Uh, the Jerusalem artichokes, I get quite a few compliments on those. Yeah, got mimosa. I usually just cut it back in the fall. I uh, already cut that one back over there. Chestnut tree is still struggling. Getting a lot of grasses. Gomi berries. Uh, gomi bushes. Yeah, they're coming along. Again, just a little bit of mulch on top of them. And then you can kind of see the other ones over here. This rainwater harvesting design is really starting to slant. I didn't like it. I, yeah, this design I wanted to see if I could cut a lot of corners and when I did try and cut some corners using 2 by 6s and other stuff and then not leveling the ground as much, it's definitely got some slant now and I'm going to have to redo it, unfortunately. So that's about it. Yeah, just update. Oh, and my chestnut tree. This guy is tending to explode. I think, can't remember how old he is, maybe 5 to 7 years. But the first year or two, they really, really struggle, but now that 
it's established. I mean, it's tending to really kick some ass, and it looks like its leaves are starting to yellow up just ever so slightly. Yeah, and it keeps the leaves during the winter. They just stick. They stay on the plant and then the tree, so it provides quite a bit of winter shade. Yeah, so I wasn't expecting that when I first planted it, but yeah, I mean, it's really growing like crazy, and this one I haven't cut any branches or pruned or pruned up, so I kind of letting this one go wild. And this one I was thinking I would, if it ever gets to be the sister plant, I would uh, prune that one, you know, just as an experiment. Yeah, thanks for watching.